Peace be upon you. How are you guys? May Allah be satisfied with you. Put it down here, on the asphalt. And go bring the chairs. How are you, Abu Hassam? Have a seat. Go bring it. Sit down. And blow the air. You have to start the fire first, then put the grilling net. In the 60s we worked with oranges. Steamships came from Turkey, Spain, Germany, and from all over Europe. They exported oranges, lemon, mandarin, and grapefruit. But since 1967, steamships have stopped coming here, and we've stopped exporting all of the above, nor any kind of citrus, and we replace them with corn. We would at any place, even in the sea. We worked with the corn and everything else. We did it all. Local or...? Yes, local, very good. How many times did the Hebrews think they could erase us, to get rid of us and take our land? But thank God we withstood. Hungry, full or whatever, our population has withstood. People wonder how we can live with the embargo. They think we must be dying under it. Thank God we eat, we drink. If there's nothing to eat, we make lentils. And this is a blessing. This is grilled corn. All the drivers pass by for some. <laughs> Welcome, it's two shekels. We're thankful. Life has ups and downs. My son said they wanted to build a house. One sold his wife's jewelry and made 4,000 dinars. The others made 4,000 dinars and I did too. So we have 16,000. That's very good. The engineer said we needed 29,000. So he waited for you? We paid 16,000 cash and 13 by installments, 100 shekels every month. That's not bad. Yeah, we signed the contract and now we've built the house. Come get grilled corn. His teeth must be hurting him. Never once have I seen a country more beautiful than ours. Our country is a good country. Believe me, Hajj. Our country is precious and can't be dishonored. This is a blessing. Hello, how are you? You're taking your father's place today? How much is this? Half a shekel. I'm taking five of these. The electricity was cut off. You're using a power generator. Today is our turn then. Come on, son. <laughs> Come, Faris. This is for you. Hamada, this is yours. Where's your brother, Muhammad? Give him this, son. The power was cut off. So what? Oh, God. Let's blow this candle off. No need for it. 
O oh Allah, I entrust you with my soul. Try to work faster so it doesn't cost as much. Here, give me a block, Ahed. Listen, cut some of it. All right, go, 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 go. I'm passionate about constructions and buildings. People here like the change and love stylish architecture and the art of architecture. They like being creative and building beautiful houses. Before the embargo, constructions were super active due to the increasing population in Gaza. We have one of the world's highest rates of reproduction here in Gaza, which needs this kind of construction. Ahmad, you should tie knots here. The net is very high here. Make it lower. When the embargo started, they cut all the supplies from entering the sector. Cement, steel, the rubble and blocks. For two years, we became unemployed and homeless. I was asking myself, how could we become like this after we lost hope under the embargo? Could we build again and buy cement and steel? Can we get back to living again? We had to look for jobs. We wanted to work and live. We were dead. We made blocks from mud and built houses using them. We went to the old days, but that wasn't a solution. We tried to make cement by mixing mud and rubble, but it didn't work. Then when the tunnels came out, we were pulling packets of cement, one by one. It was a great achievement. But it was very hard to do. Look at the steel we worked with. We pulled the steel from the tunnel one by one. We cut it and bent it to make it easier. Then we fixed it to use it. We want to work. We want to do something. Change these, change these. They aren't enough. Fix them, my man. I have been surprised after the war. We have grind the concrete and we use it to make the steel. Found inside, it was a great, great achievement. A great competition. And the human brain can't imagine what we bring to concrete from rubble and transform it to a new construction. Bit. The house after the war was almost destroyed. Every time I arrive, I tell the owner, Abu Ala, aren't you afraid it's going to be destroyed again? He replied, as long as I'm alive, every time they destroy a house in Gaza, I will rebuild it, God willing. Drink, drink. Remember when they first imposed the embargo, guys? We didn't have anything. I looked in half of Gaza for some cement to fill a hole in my ceiling. <laughs> Let the cement alone. What about the candles? Dude, you needed a candle to light your way to the bathroom at night. And the salt. No, Haj Mufid. 
I had salt that can feed the whole sector. You didn't have flour. It was three million for a packet. They think people in Gaza don't have food or water, living in tents. Yeah, that's true. I didn't enroll in any workshops. I worked in power generators. I learned how to program computers by myself. I wanted to make a living. I worked in constructions. I learned all of that. Even worked in electricity just to live. You're not alone in that. Yes. Most guys today work in anything to survive. That's creativity in itself. You had your cup of tea. Let's go to work. Oh, God. I am my Warda from Ramallah. I have known my husband Muhammad when I was in West Bank, but the occupation have prevent me to reach Gaza and prevent Muhammad to reach the West Bank. Welcome. I have traveled from West Bank to Jordan, then to Egypt, and from Egypt I have went down to the Tunnel Road, to the Death Road, and that's to make a challenge with life. How much is the tissue paper? Seven. And that? Three and a half. For sure the distance that is supposed to take with me an hour from Qalandia to Gaza has taken four days. I thought that the situation in Gaza is simple, but her situation is too messed up. The camps are everywhere, but when I arrived to Gaza, I have found something totally different from what I have think about when I was in the West Bank. Hello. Hello. Are you done? Yeah. You brought Qusay from aunties. Are you asleep? Look at Mama. She's making you soup, but you don't have teeth. Anything else? No, there's nothing. I have imagined my situation, that they give me away and I am on Kara. Kara is the donkey. But when I arrived here, I have found the situation is totally different. Muhammad have prepared a car. My wedding party was in front of the sea. I couldn't have dreamed more better than that. Praise to Allah, the God of the worlds. How beautiful the sunset is. Look at the sea. It's stunning. It is. Do you have one like that in the West Bank? A dead sea. Isn't Gaza beautiful? It is. Look at the stunning sea. Look over there, son. Look at the ship. <laughs> Look at the ship.
I wish I could go there. I really wish that. We'd use a helicopter to throw you in the middle of the sea there. No, I want to go on this trip. That's how they fish, right? Yes, you see the ships. Come over here. Come on. What's up, man? Come sit here. Let's work very hard and fish these couple of days. What's wrong with him? Who? This guy? Look at him. They ruined his machine, but he still uses it and goes fishing and it's okay. I have to go fishing. You have to. And we all do. Working very hard. Abu Saeed, I'm coming. Just give me a moment to change. Yes, just turn one more time. Just a little bit, slowly. People wake up early, talking about people. Other people sail in the sea, forgetting it all. The full fights the hungry in this country. Yes, use the wheel. Oh, Captain, come on, go slowly. We thank God day and night. That's how life is. And that's how it stays, don't forget. God is always against injustice. And we're oppressed. Yeah, sure. We never know when they come shooting at us. Here they come. I swear to God, I want to jump and choke him to death. Just let me do it. Just like Awad. Oh, Awad. They think they're scaring us by shooting. Keep firing your guns. You already invaded the land, the sky, the sea, and everything. I fast every day, then I eat my sorrows. And I brush off whatever the Israeli tells me. <laughs> oh, Palestine, don't be sad. Time changes. How weird deers get replaced by monkeys. Let's have lunch, guys. Oh, I wish the night would send my greetings to my beloveds and remind them of my love and the good old days. Amen.
Peace upon you. Peace, Peace upon, upon you. you. Is everything okay? I have just arrived from work, Om Ala. May Allah give you wellness. I want you to help me in cooking miftool for my son, Ala. What did you cook today? I cooked peas. Happy meal. I have cooked mlukhiya. This clothesline gathers us to talk. We didn't see each other since a while. I have seen you doing your laundry. I was relieved. I'll complete the laundry, then I'll go to cook the maftool. I'll send for Um Jamal and Um Tahani to help me. We will talk and we will sing. May Allah strengthen the love between us. We are done. Come in, Um Ala. Sorry, I'm tired. I want to get home. May Allah give you the wellness. Auntie Um Jamal, how much simulina should I put? A couple of these. You know, I don't like to put too much. Is it enough? Put more. Is it enough? Okay. Shahid, bring some water and put a salt pinch. Dina, come on, stand up. You who go abroad, your country is better for you. I'm worried you enslave yourself. Live without others and forget me. With your great figure, you who did harm me. With your black eyes, you whom I am madly in love with you. You sing beautifully. Go on. Trying to have fun. My voice is not good today. You with your great figure. Long fine threads are reaching playfully the ankles. I asked to approach but... I was told to safeguard modesty. Bring a pinch of salt, my dear. May those who hate you depart early, Um Jamal. There is no blessing in the maftool without you. Thank you. Just do like this. Just give it to me. Yes, do it like I told you. Okay, as you like. Just tell me how can I do it. These people of Yafa don't know how to make maftool. They ask women to make it for them. They don't put zucchini. They put just tomato or onions. We put zucchini, salted butter, and onion. Your maftool is the most delicious, Om Jamal. It's very delicious in the very cold weather. We put salt, green pepper, and hot sauce. I like hot sauce. Yes, we put a lot. They said they put only two packets of whole. Yes, they did. No rice, no chicken, no meat. A packet and a half of whole family. Aunts and uncles, a big family. Yes. When my children get married, I'm making them maftool. May God let this happen. Thank you. Put some water. Come on, Um Tahani. May Allah never break us apart. Stick them together. Make it like this. That's what I'm doing, Auntie Um Jamal. Um Jamal, you are high. You are the moon. And we are the stars. 
you are a blessing. You are truly a blessing. Oh, very deflying. The brunt and the blonde became flea woman. The brunt insults her for her shorter hair. The blonde insults her on her winking eye with coquetry. The loved one left without saying goodbye. Pistachio and seeds, pistachio and seeds. Nuts over here. All for one shekel today. It's hot and roasted. Come get some, guys. That looks fine. Delicious turkey over here. Come, guys. Such a romantic time. And a special occasion. A good occasion, of course. Thank you. I will drink coffee. What would you like? Coffee too. What does this number mean to you? 32 refers to our marriage anniversary. What a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. No one can top you as a gentleman. This is the color of our days. Thank you. May Allah make it last forever. Till the 62nd. Of course, days are better with you. Thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine this life? How the first time I celebrated our marriage anniversary in the war, I felt it was like the first time in my life. Do you remember after 10 years of our marriage, the first intifada occurred? Yes. These were difficult days, but every year we celebrated our marriage anniversary and celebrated your birthday and our children's birthday. Correct? Yes, we celebrate it with the family. Whatever they do, they cannot steal our smile and our happiness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this cake. Thank you. Together? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy. Thank you. We celebrate together. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
What can someone wish for more than this? Do you remember the scandal of our marriage anniversary that followed the war? And what was I feel, the marriage anniversary following our house demolition was our first anniversary? Yes, exactly. I insisted on bringing it with me after what happened and I will keep it forever. Yes, you can light it now. You can light it here. I considered it as a first anniversary for me after the demolition of my house. May you celebrate it every year. I really wish that. <laughs> May Allah give you good health, mom. You too. How are you? Thank you, Allah. What are you cooking for us today? I made pasta with bechamel. How was your day at school? We had a math pop quiz, but I got a good mark. Great! That's because you study regularly. Today I have the last rehearsal. Okay, change your clothes and pray to prepare lunch before your father comes. I watched different rehearsals and saw many movements. But what is it about Dal'una and Zarif al Are these types of dabka? There are many types of dabka songs. As you can see, a lot of people, old and young, like this type of music because it always reminds them of their traditions and their lands. These are going from generation to generation. Go now, not to be late for your rehearsal. Hi. Hello, how are you? You are late. Sorry, I'm having lunch. Okay, it's not a problem. Today is the last rehearsal. Yes, they may play Zarif Atul. Yes, they might. I don't know. Hi, hi, how are you? Selma, Rimaz, attention please. You still have 20 minutes before the people come. Go quickly. Each one should bring her costume and wear it quickly and be present in the right place. Ready? Ready! Ready! Ready? Ready!
My name is Sharif Sarhan, an artist and photographer from Gaza. I have been a photographer for around 10 years. I live in a region that witnesses a lot of conflicts and tension. This region makes your life constantly endangered as a result of wars on Gaza. I work with many news agencies and international organizations who ask me to film the stories of people of Gaza in time of wars and the hard human conditions they live in Gaza. Yes, sir. Thanks to God. How are you? I sent you some photos that say something different about Gaza. The same stories that we already said, but we are still adding other different stories. We visited some places that people are not used to see. Anyways, I will take some others and will send them to you along with the text. Okay, great. We keep in touch through email and phone. Okay. Bye. Now we are entering the region of Izbat Abed Rabbu, one of the regions that were demolished in the war on Gaza. Here you can see the suffering of the people. Such pictures are what they ask us to take as photographers in Gaza. And the second photo invites anyone to come to Gaza. It's full of life and hope. What is important is to find within this destruction is a sign of life and a sign that people are capable to live. And both are real. You cannot deny any of them. Both are existing in Palestine. We are now in the port of the fishermen. It is a little seaport for them, not a port with its true meaning. They came out so they can fish, and they return again with the fish they have caught and put it in this port and take it to the fish market to sell it. Gaza is beautiful with her sea. You can't imagine Gaza without the sea and the sea without Gaza. Also the little children since their childhood, they learn how to ride the boats and how to get out to fish. There exists two sides for the sea. The first is the beautiful one, and the second which represents the suffering. And it is a part of the life of the fishermen who live it daily. Despite this suffering, the people have the willingness and the power, even if they don't catch any fish. But you can see a beautiful picture and beautiful souls. We are now in the fish market, the place where the fishermen are gathered and where they gather the fish. People come here to see the fish, even if they can't buy it, but they come to see the price of the fish, if it is low or high. And this is the story of fishermen, fishing and the fish. Today we are in Zawiya Market. This is one of the oldest markets in Gaza. It is known as the market where herbs and spices are sold. And it is one of the markets where people love to come.
Despite this embargo, the markets haven't been affected a lot because the traders found alternatives through the tunnels and other roads to let goods enter. How much are the strawberries today? For a box or a kilo? Oh, come on. Peace be with you. And also with you. How are you, uncle? Thank God. Tell me how you are. How about this time? This is Nabosi time. We make it, we put oil in it according to the Jordanian way. Was this available during the embargo? No, it was cut out. We've come across, praise be to God, the traders have imported it from Jordan. They bring it from the West Bank to Jordan to Egypt, from Jordan from the tunnels to Egypt. A very long way. And that's spice. And this is a spice, made in Gaza. No one knows it except for the people who live in Gaza. Uh -huh. We're famous for this spice. We sell it and also people make it on their own, in their own houses. Here you go. How are you? Working for the agency now, right? Okay, I want 250 grams of this and a little bit of that. We are now in the beach camp, one of the refugee camps where we live out our day-to-day -day activities. Hi, Antum Ala. How are you? Thank you for the maftool. No, you don't need to thank me. A common factor exists in all these camps, the clothesline that exists inside the tunnel or in the small streets in the camp. The clothesline is where the women of the camp gather. They talk while they hang the laundry. They talk about their daily life, their concerns and problems. The camp produces the most educated people in Gaza. In it exists a group of people who lead the Palestinian community. All of that is a mix that the camp has made inside Gaza. Now we will climb the hilltop of El Mantar. The hilltop is the highest place in Gaza. From this hilltop, you can see Gaza from a different view. Such a beautiful view. This view is different. It will enable you to see the picture of Gaza in a different way. The real other picture of Gaza that presents the beauty, the love, and the depth that exists inside Gaza. How the people have the insistence and the determination to persist and to move on with the construction of this country, despite the war, the wounds, the destruction and death inside the village. And this is Gaza. <laughs> 